Hi, I'm Dr. John Parker, and today I'm going to go over an, our non-drug approach to irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, IBS, colitis, using functional nutrition and functional neurology protocols. I'm Dr. John Parker, my wife, Dr. Alexa Parker. She's going to go through the second half of this video, and she's going to go through a case study with you also. We're chiropractors. We've been practicing about 12 years. Currently enrolled in postgraduate chiropractic neurology diplomate program through the Carrick Institute of uh, Postgraduate Education. I've studied functional blood chemistry, functional endocrinology, and functional neurotransmitters under Dr. Tatis Karazian. He, he's the author of Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal? I've studied under Dr. Michael Johnson. He's the author of What Do You Do When the Medications Don't Work? Studied under Apex Energetics using uh, functional nutrition protocols and their nutritional products. And we're level two quantum reflex analysis kinesiology certified. So when we look at people that have things like IBS and Crohn's and colitis, they have common threads with chronic health conditions. People that have chronic health conditions from fibromyalgia, Crohn's, IBS, diabetes, peripheral neuropathies, they have problems that are wrong metabolically and neurologically. So we want to take a minute and look at some of these common threads of what you have wrong. First off, people tend to have anemias. They tend to have problems with their thyroid, unstable blood sugar. They have adrenal gland dysfunction, hormonal imbalances autoimmunities. This group of people, especially with people that have gut problems, have high levels uh, statistically to have an autoimmune problem. Hidden infections in their gut, they could have viral overload. We see people that have that all the time. They have heavy loads of viruses. Food sensitivities, from common foods that they're eating to specific types of foods, and we, so we identify things. Leaky gut, which is a problem with the intestinal barrier system chronically inflamed, so a lot of times not only do they have gut problems, but on some labs, like they might have C-reactive protein, high, high uh, homocysteine levels, other inflammatory markers that show that they're having problems in those areas. Uh, chronic inflammation is definitely one we work on. They also have problems with neurologic imbalances. They have problems with their brain. People start having changes. They have changes in sensation, cognition, and movement. Those are the three big areas that we see people present that have gut problems especially. So they start having inflammatory cascades in the brain. They start having changes in how they're thinking and how they're feeling. Gut-brain connection. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said, look to the gut there you will find the origin of almost all human illnesses. Your gut has a huge impact on your health. So having a problem with like IBS, Crohn's, colitis, you have other health factors that you either have a problem with or you're developing. So we want to start off with this diagram right here and explain when you have gut inflammation, how does it affect your brain? And when you have brain inflammation, it affects your gut. It's a two-way communication. People have gut inflammation. It's usually from an immune reaction to a, a, a sensitivity of a food or a hidden infection. People have a lot of infections in their gut system. How do things get into our body? Right through here. So we tend to get different types of infections, whether it's uh, a parasite, an imbalance, or sensitivity, it, different kinds of infections can go on in the gut system. So when you have a, a hidden infection in your gut or food sensitivity, it produces inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines are messengers that go through your bloodstream and trigger your immune response. So you get inflammatory cytokines that cross into the bloodstream. This also, the inflammatory cytokines, leads to leaky gut and leads to more food sensitivities. So you have more inflammation, more inflammatory cytokines, and it's a vicious loop that you have to break. We break that by testing and finding the hidden infections. We fix the infections and we do things to fix things like leaky gut. 
these inflammatory cytokines cross in your bloodstream. There they float around and they trigger your immune system to be overactive and they cross the blood brain barrier system. When they cross into the blood brain center system, they go across that barrier and they react and they trigger the brain's microglial cells, which are the brain's immune cells. This causes the brain to be inflamed, inflammatory based. And we have a saying, fire in the gut, fire in the brain. 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. Anything that causes an immune battle in your gut will trigger an inflammation. Things such as food sensitivities, chronic infections, bacterial infections, parasites, fungus, yeast, molds, viruses, <clears throat> even an undergrowth of good healthy bacteria. When you look at people's guts, when we run testing, we look at all of those different things and what we see is they tend to have very big imbalances called dysbiosis in their gut. When you have dysbiosis, it can be because of several different factors. You could have an infection, you could have parasites, could have a slime biofilm layer, you could have yeast overgrowth. These can be driven by things like t excess sugar in your diet. They can be triggered by they can be triggered also by heavy metals. Heavy metals cause a, a problem with, you know, the people that really can never fix their gut health, I always start thinking that they have a heavy metal problem, heavy toxic burden. 90% of the <coughs> brain cells are, are immune cells and they're called microglial cells. Activating microglial cells causes brain inflammation. Causes of IBS. There's a link to gut infections like we were talking about, bacterial, fungus, yeast, parasitic, and viruses. Abnormalities between gut flora and gut immune system, inflammatory processes, food sensitivities, adrenal stresses. Adrenals sit on our kidneys or a gland that releases cortisol and high levels of cortisol thin our barrier system and our gut barrier system is definitely affected by adrenal stress it leads to leaky gut. And we'll show you in a, in, at the end of the slides here an example of a leaky gut test that we run. The big topic that you, you see nowadays is gluten sensitivities. We run the most advanced gluten testing uh, in the, on the market today. It's very advanced, very scientific, and it breaks gluten down into subcategories of the gluten. So we can really identify not only are you having a gluten sensitivity, but you can almost predict based on that the type of different symptoms people have. Overactive, overactive sympathetic nervous system, brain imbalances. The brain stem is the part of the brain that regulates your sympathetic nervous system, your autonomics, your pulse rate, your heart rate, your respiration, your gut motility. All those things are controlled in the brain stem. And when you have inflammatory processes and when you have a uh, <clears throat> cascade of, of, of cytokines, microglial cell activation, it affects your uh, brainstem area and you have poor output and control. Your brain is overfiring, so we actually do some brain-based activities in our office to balance out that high-firing centers of your brain, of the brainstem. Chemical stresses to the brain and gut system. Many, many people have problems with IBS, have, or Crohn's or colitis, have these different problems. They have anemias. If you have anemias, you're not getting enough oxygen to, blood, to your red, red blood cells. You could have pernicious anemias, where you're not getting enough B vitamins from a good quality natural source of B vitamins. Blood sugar imbalances, people have a lot of problems with blood sugar. That's probably the number one stressor to our body, especially in the United States, when you look at our food system. Food sensitivities, gluten, casein, soy, those are the big ones right there, dairy, the dairy part. The immune system imbalances that we talked about, the autoimmunities. Poor diet, very inflammatory diet. Poor ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids hypothyroid, low, low thyroid function. Prescription and non-prescription drugs definitely affect you. Chronic inflammation and again, hidden infections, especially in the gut. These are metabolic problems 
that create nervous system imbalances so that the brain's not controlling gut function properly. So it's a vicious cycle that needs to be worked on. Emotional stressors. You know how people always say, I feel it in my gut? That's because your autonomics have such a direct correlation to your gut. They call the gut the second, the second brain. So when you have a lot of stress, it drives the sympathetics and the sympathetics really affect digestive processes. That's the fight or flight. When you're in fight or flight, when you're in that fight mode, you don't digest and break down foods properly and it leads to the triggers of poor function. Cortisol imbalances. Cortisol imbalances definitely have a problem where they create a, an insulin resistance type pro problem, raises blood sugar. People that have problems with cortisol tend to have high triglycerides, LDLs, and cholesterol issues, and they cause the breakdown of that. Just definitely affects your brain and your nervous system. Metabolic disorders that we talked about, again, just to review them. Anemias, blood sugar imbalances, food sensitivities, immune system imbalances, thyroid dysfunction, inflammatory cascades, and hidden infections. So how do you know if you have them? We do some testing, proper testing. Based on your history, we may run any of the following. Complete blood chemistry panels. And when I say complete, I can tell you that when people come to our office, the tests we run are so much more expansive than what they're getting. We're in a professional co-op, so we can leverage price discounts to really get complete labs. People are always amazed at how much more lab testing we can do and really look completely for these things, in your, in your, especially in your blood work. We do salivary hormone testing where we look at adrenals tests throughout the day, your cortisol rhythm, your cortisol levels, and we also look at free fraction hormones. So we can look at free fraction hormones to see what is your available amount of hormones versus just looking at it in a blood test. Saliva testing for hormones is the best way to see what you really have available and what kind of problems are you having. DNA stool profile. People with gut problems, the majority of people, I always run this. I want to know, looking at the DNA of everything in your gut, do you have hidden critters? Do you have parasites? Many, many people have parasites. We want to look for hidden infections to see, so we can work properly to clear them out. See if you have poor gut flora, infections, parasites, yeast, Food sensitivity testing to gluten and multiple other foods from Cyrex Labs. We look at leaky gut syndrome. We look at autoimmune tests through Cyrex Labs. To, it, they have a predictive uh, antibody test to look, is your immune system attacking your gut tissue? Is it affecting your, attacking gut tissue? Is it affecting your thyroid, sex hormones? There's so many different things you can look at when you run autoimmune testing antibodies to predictively see where you're at. I'm going to let my wife, Dr. Alexa, take over from here. She's going to go through the rest of the testing we do, and she's going to do a case review study of a patient that she just took care of. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Dr. Alexa Parker, and I'm going to continue on with some of the testing that we do in our office and go over a case study that we had recently in our office. So starting off, uh, first we're going to talk about gluten sensitivity testing. So many patients that have, um, uh, you know, IBS or Crohn's or, or possibly celiac that come to our office for, you know, digestive issues or digestive problems, a lot of them have been tested for gluten sensitivity. However, a lot of them have been tested and have been shown to be false uh, negative, actually. And the reason for that is, is because most doctors do not run a complete panel such as this one. Just one, generally most people are checked for alpha gliadin, which is one of the types of molecules that you react to if you're, if you eat a food, for example, wheat immediately, you would have an immediate response. Most patients don't have that type of response. Most patients actually have a delayed response, particularly if they're a non-celiac uh, if they're non-celiac or they have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So this test looks at nine different molecules of wheat 
And it also shows us where in the body is actually being damaged as a result of gluten sensitivity. So it look, tells us if your body, if your immune system is producing antibodies against your, your, your gut system, your GI system, if it's attacking your skin or your brain. So most patients that we see with IBS or gut type problems actually exhibit these other symptoms. So anemias, you know, brain fog, um, skin problems, joint pain. And one of the things that can really contribute to that is gluten sensitivity. So this is one of the tests that we utilize. We can also, though, look at um, antibodies to many different body tissues, such as the thyroid, the gut, the heart, the brain, or the skin. And this test would be done more in the autoimmune individual, so more of a Crohn's type case that we would actually look at the different antibodies. Or if we suspected that that was any kind of neurological damage related to autoimmunity. Another test that we do is a DNA stool test. And this test is, is actually able to show us if you have good levels of beneficial bacteria in the gut or if you have gut infections, such, a bac such as bacterial infections. It actually looks for the DNA of the gut bug. I can't tell you how many patients I've seen that have been to numerous practitioners and numerous doctors that have had, had lots of blood tests, but they've never been able to determine if there was a gut infection. This test is great for that because it actually enables us to target what type of infection. For example, if you have an H. pylori infection or a Clostridium infection or a Staph infection that's actually wreaking havoc on your gut system. Or do you have a yeast infection, you know, an overall yeast or bacterial load? Or a parasitic infection. So a lot of these, I've had several patients that have had multiple infections and we'd actually have to address each one of those things. So this enables us to see a, a really much better picture of what's causing your gut to malfunction. It also allows us to see you know, how your immune system's doing, because if you have three or four gut bugs, you know, your immune system is, is in constant you know, overdrive, basically, and constant inflammation occurs, so that bloating, pain, distension, all of those things. Another thing that really is important is, you know, some patients that we see, again, they've already go, may have gone off gluten because they think it may irritate their condition. However, they may not be completely, you know, they may not have gone off all of the things that are driving their immune response in their gut or the bloating pain sensation in their gut. There's actually foods that react just like gluten would in the body. So your immune, actually, your immune system actually targets those foods because they look very similar to gluten. And those foods are things like rice, potato, you know, um, amaranth, quinoa, uh, I'm sorry, eggs, milk, dairy products. So foods that we actually think are safe for people that are gluten sensitive. So it's very important in the patients that are not seeing results by being gluten-free to really look at, well, what are the other reactivities and what, that are creating, wreaking, wreaking havoc on your immune system and on your gut system? So this means that every time you ingest one of these foods, it's causing inflammation, pain, distension, and also for some of you, brain fog, joint pain, fatigue, those types of things too. This is an example of a gluten-associated uh, cross-reactivity test. And again, it looks at cow's milk, you know, cheese, caseomorphine, which is the protein in cheese, chocolate, um, rye, barley, sorghum, spelt, amaranth. Again, some of these foods that we think are fine for people that are gluten-sensitive, gluten that they're actually allowed to have those foods. But in reality, for people that have chronic issues, you know, many people develop cross-reactivities because our immune system starts to target them. So it's very important that, you know, we really get to the root cause so that we can eliminate those foods so that you can truly heal the gut and really help the immune system heal and therefore reestablish health. One of the other things that we look at um, that's very common in the news media right now is leaky gut syndrome. This test actually looks at the intestinal barrier of, of your gut. So, so when we look at the intestine or leaky gut test, we can actually see that normally these cells should be nice and close together. 
there shouldn't be a breach in that area here. Up here is the microvilli, and here is where occludin and zonulin proteins are. When we have a lot of stress, such as adrenal stress, you know, which raises our cortisol, if we have a lot of, we're eating a lot of foods that we're sensitive to, or we have a lot of emotional, chemical triggers, um, such as heavy metals, or even foods that we think are healthy, you know, eating the standard American diet, such as you know, that has hormones, antibiotics in our food chain, that can damage the gut system, GMOs as well. So as this, this basically will tell us if you have a, a breach in that gut barrier system, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So if you have a breach in this area, right now you may have inflammation and pain in your gut. However, if left unchecked over a period of time, those proteins that you eat will start to leak into the bloodstream. And from there, they can actually go to the brain and cause brain fog, brain, neurological damage, so problems thinking, fatigue, that type of thing. They can also go to the thyroid and cause autoimmune thyroid. They can go to the joints and cause pain in the joints, rheumatoid, that type of thing. So again, we really want to, our main focus is to really reestablish normal function in the gut, heal the barrier system, and really get you on the right fuel that's going to work for your body and help with your symptoms. Not, not only help with your symptoms, but actually help you heal 100%. So another thing that can happen is as we start to clean up the gut is that some, this thing called a biofilm actually can occur. And what that is, is it's basically a resistant bacteria that, that appears in your gut or occurs in your gut. So over time, whether it's because of infections, multiple infections in your gut and damage to the immune system, these gut bugs develop this resistance actually to even antibiotics and, and medications. So they develop this slime layer to protect themselves. So as we begin to kill off the gut infections that you have, other infections can occur underneath those slime layers. So we actually use enzymes to help break down those slime layers, and then we kill off the, the gut bug underneath. Um, as we talked about in the previous slides, excess cortisol Excess cortisol is when we have a lot of stress in our life, physical, emotional, chemical stress. That causes our adrenal glands to produce a lot of cortisol, which puts us in a stress response. That stress response really damages the gut barrier, breaks down the gut barrier system. So that's one of the triggers for leaky gut syndrome. And then from there again, when we have leaky gut, it can actually leak through, you know, proteins can leak into the bloodstream and affect the brain barrier. It can affect the lung barrier, which can cause us to have a lot of colds, asthma, that type of thing. Skin, um, early aging and wrinkles, as well as psoriasis and eczema. Leaky gut, if left uncorrected, it's, it's going to constantly trigger the immune system. So if 80% of your immune system is in your gut or in your, your GI system here, if we do not heal this, you'll, be, you'll frequently get sick and you will not be able to heal the body. So just giving you, you know, basic supplements or basic things to just you know, work on the symptoms is, is nowhere gonna touch really healing the gut system. So we have to get to the root cause. We've gotta dig deep. We've gotta look at what are the triggers? You know, what are the foods that you're eating? Do you have a lot of adrenal stress? Do you have any gut infections or do you have any emotional chemical triggers? That's what our job basically consists of so we can really get you back to health. Again, one of the causes um, of adrenal stress, so mental and emotional and chemical stresses, um, such as a chemical stress being coffee, alcohol, medications, physical stress being you know, injuries, traumas, that type of thing, um, which would cause tissue damage, inflammation and pain. Blood sugar regulation as well can cause it. So that high cortisol affects the gut barrier, causes damage to it, and then we start to get all of these um, symptoms there in the gut system. So many of you have probably had a lot of tests, um, and you may have been told that your lab tests are normal. And I see this all the time in our office. So, you know, again, you know, patient presents saying, you know, I've had all these blood tests, but doctor says I'm normal but I still have all these symptoms. And the reason is, is because most traditional lab ranges use much broader 
ranges in order to dis determine if someone has a disease. But with us, we actually use functional ranges, so we much, use much narrower ranges because we're concerned not only if this person has disease, but actually if they have the precursors to disease. So we look at you much, much differently, more from a holistic standpoint. For example, if someone has a blood sugar regulation problem and they're tested, traditional ranges are 65 to 110. However, functional ranges, you should be between 85 and 100, and that's fasting. So for example, if someone has a range of 73, that means they have hypoglycemia. And it's the same thing with, with thyroid disorders as well as cholesterol and anemia. So for example, you know, we're able to detect much, much deeper into someone's health because we use much narrower ranges when we look at blood. And we generally do much more advanced tests to really look at the whole body. And that's what you really have to look at the whole body in order to get someone well. So once we find out where the problem is, we actually use nutrition and supplementation to heal the gut, to work on, now again, depending upon the person, we work on the thyroid, the adrenals, the liver and detoxification systems. We work on you know, healing any anemias, sugar regulation issues, and also really regulating the immune system if, if that's what we find in the individual, if we suspect autoimmunity. That, so we look at the whole body and really use a holistic approach. If there is, okay, if there's a brain imbalance, we work on correcting that as well, because as Dr. John talked about, someone has inflammation in the gut, that causes inflammation in the brain and vice versa. So if we have someone who's chronically fatigued, you know, who has low energy, we may have to use some things such as um, fuel, we have to use proper fuel as far as supplementation and dietary changes. We also may use oxygenation to fuel the brain. Along with that, we may use some things like detoxification therapies um, to help just improve their overall energy so that they can do their everyday things. We also have a tool called the Rife Machine which if we have, uh, find an infection on, like a gut infection, we actually have someone use this machine and we can program it for the particular gut bug. For example, it may be a yeast infection throughout the entire body. We, it's a light generated machine that actually kills off yeast. If we find an H. pylori infection, we can actually program it to help kill off the gut bug. Along with that, we may use clay packs to help detoxify and we may use um, detoxification foot baths or applications to help pull out toxins and really take off the, the load, the um, immune burden to the body so that, it can, that you can heal. And um, generally, most, pa most patients, they, they see an improvement in the way they, they feel energetically. So we want to help them along with that so that they can make some of the dietary changes as well as have more energy. Uh, Crohn's is an autoimmune condition. This means that your immune system is mistakenly attacking your body. Um, there's several autoimmune react conditions that are associated with Crohn's, one of them being Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and that just means basically that your immune cells are attacking your thyroid gland. Graves' disease, this is also an autoimmune condition, um, and it's actually when the uh, thyroid is in a hyperthyroid state, and it's can also go along with Crohn's. And people can be more susceptible to this autoimmunity as the gut barrier starts to break down. So the immune system is in our gut, so we can have more susceptibility to rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Type 1 diabetes is actually linked to autoimmunity. Pernicious anemia as well, which is a problem absorbing where you can't absorb proper amounts of iron in your gut. One-fifth of people are, are autoimmune. Most don't know it. So again, you know, usually as we work on an individual, we're finding that they have more than just irritable bowel syndrome a lot of times. They may have several symptoms, but we basically go about it from a whole body standpoint as far as really calming down the immune responses and immune attacks against the organ systems. Um, our approach with Crohn's is to remove the triggers to the immune system. So that would be removing any foods that you're reacting to, healing, or dealing with any infections in the gut, removing any triggers. 
and correcting damaging effects on the gut and brain. So that would be some of the things that we talked about, exercise with oxygen, clay detoxification baths using the Rife machine, um, and really you know, working on the neurological system too. Common triggers to autoimmunity, I think we talked a lot about that, but food intolerances, gluten, casein, soy, egg, dairy, smoking, hidden infections usually occur in the gut, but it can also be things like viral loads as well. Unstable blood sugar, omega-6 versus omega-3 fatty acids, stressed adrenal glands, and hormonal imbalances. Um, now I'm gonna discuss a case that we had recently. Um, I have a case of a 43-year-old female who came in and was complaining of irritable bowel, um, you know, bloating, pain, distension, um, inability to have bowel movements. She probably had a bowel movement about once a week, if that. Um, no matter what she ate, and she was actually a pretty healthy eater, she still would have pain and discomfort. Uh, one of the things that we found upon you know, history and examination when we consulted with her was that she had a history of a lot of stress um, related to work. She traveled out of the country as well, uh, multiple times for long periods of time. A lot of stress in her life related to work. When we did her saliva test, because we thought that was an important test to do on her because of the high stress levels that she had, and also she was concerned about her hormones too, we found that um, her cortisol level, which is her stress hormone, which normally should be between 22 and 46, was a whopping 206. So her cortisol levels were extremely high. So one of the things we knew was that, um, you know, that, that obviously that there was probably damage to the gut barrier because of this high level of cortisol. And what we found was that her cortisol rhythm was that she was extremely high in the morning all throughout the day and even into the night, actually the whole time she was, she was pretty much elevated. Then this is, this is where her rhythm cortisol load was and the green is where it should be basically. So some of the things that she expressed was, you know, inability to sleep, <laughs> chronic gut issues, you know, um, was constantly alert and, and awake. So we found that this was one of the reasons why her, her cortisol level was so high. So we started doing some things with her, which we're gonna talk about in the next couple of slides. But after about four months after doing the protocol that we did with healing her gut and working on her gut infections and healing her, working on her adrenals as well, her cortisol load came down to 26. So from 206 to 26. And this is through um, dietary changes, supplementation. We worked on killing gut infections as well and took her off the foods that she was sensitive to. So this patient now was going from here where she couldn't sleep, she couldn't exercise. Um, now she was able to sleep. She has you know, much better um, mood. She feels better. Her gut's functioning much better. This is just one of the tests that we did with her. The other test that we did with her, we actually found that she had, she actually had four gut infections. This just represents two, this is a different test, but she actually had four gut infections we found. So she had two bacterial infections and two parasitic infections. And we know that, you know, with that high adrenal stress, it probably, you know, damaged her gut barrier. And when she was out of the country in Afghanistan, she, it's very likely that eating the foods there because her immune system was damaged, she acquired some of these nasty gut bugs. And so despite the fact that she was a fairly healthy eater and even was vegan for a period of time, um, she was actually in, in major discomfort because of a lot of these gut infections that she had. So what we did was we used a combination of herbal products to kill the specific infection for a period of time, but we also use the Rife machine, so we're able to program it to kill off these specific infections, which she could notice almost immediate change in, in her symptoms that way. The other thing we did with her is that, again, she ate pretty well. She thought she ate pretty well. Um, you know, she, she really didn't eat a whole lot of grain, but the grains that she was eating um, was hemp. She was eating, you know, uh, rice, she was eating um, potatoes, foods that she thought were gluten-free, basically. 
So when we did her cross-reactivity test, um, unfortunately, we found that she was reacting to cow's milk, milk, uh, caseo morphine, which is the protein in cheese. She had multiple, multiple cross-reactivities. Um, even foods such as, um, such as corn and rice, potato, hemp, buckwheat, millet, even some of these grains that we thought, you know, she may have thought were safe, we actually had to remove those for a period of time. So in doing that, we started to really see her, her body function at a much better rate. And this patient actually has an autoimmune disease along with the IBS symptoms. So um, she was happy to find out through doing this, not only were her symptoms 100% better, but at also her endocrinologist told her she would not need to have her thyroid removed. So again, prior to this treatment, you know, they, they thought they were definitely gonna have to remove her thyroid. But having treated her and having worked with her, we were able to resolve the underlying causes and reestablish her health. Along with the uh, adrenal stress, or t stress test that we did, we also found that initially her cortisol load in association with her DHEA, which is the precursor to her sex hormone, was adapted with a slump. After the test, when we did the post-test after four months, she was in a complete normal range. So by removing a lot of the stresses to the adrenals, we we're able to reestablish proper health. Along with that, we also found that initially her hormones were elevated. Her free testosterone was elevated to 39, and her estrone was 149. Post-treatment, post-evaluation told us that she, her free testosterone was in normal range, and also her estrogen was still elevated, but it had reduced by about 60 points. So again, um, you know, the gut is, is extremely important for absorption of hormones. <laughs> so she had so much inflammation in the gut that it disrupted her hormones and it also affected her blood sugar, which is why her testosterone is elevated. So again, by not just looking at the body from a standpoint of, okay, you know, this person has irritable bowel or inflammation, rather than just give them, you know, medications to help them feel a little better, we actually found the root causes and we were able to turn this person's life around. And now she's able to exercise, she's able to do all the things she wanted to do and feels tremendously better. And so now we don't see her as often, but we, when we do see her, she's doing fantastic. Um, some of the other things that we talked about, you know, neurological consequences to Crohn's, IBS, ulcerative colitis, um, they can be corrected if we really look at the whole body. We've got to address the whole neuro, um, metabolic or cellular problems as well as the neurological problems that, co that coincide with that, basically. So what makes our office different from ev every other doctor that you've seen? And the difference is, is that we treat people neurologically and metabolically. We basically get to the root causes, though. We look at people holistically. And along with our testing that we do, we also use applied kinesiology. So we're actually able to test people to see, well, okay, we found this on the test, but what actual products, what type of supplements are going to respond, will they respond best to? You know, what type of nutrition will they respond best to? So it allows us to really have that fine-tuning approach, too. Um, so what's next? You know, if, if this kind of care really makes sense to you, and you're really looking for two doctors that are dedicated to really get to the root causes of your condition, I highly encourage you to schedule, call our office and schedule an appointment. What that office will, what that appointment would consist of is a complete neurological evaluation. So what that means is that we'll be looking at things like your balance, your coordination, your ability to fail things equally, your ability to move in a coordinated way. That tells us how well your brain's doing and also tells us how well you're doing cellularly because if you're doing well cellularly, you should be able to move in a coordinated way and think in a coordinated way and, and function neurologically. We'll review any existing labs that you have and also um, you'll be submitting paperwork so that we can look at all of your questionnaires that you, that you submit. Um, we'll be examining you and looking at your paperwork and talking with you about your condition. 
On the second day, you'll come back. We'll sit down with you and your significant other, and we'll go over what did we find on your blood work? What, what did we find on your examination? And do we think that we can help you? And if we do, if we do think that, we're going to outline a, a certain, you know, overview of a treatment plan. We're going to let you know exactly how long it's going to take to fix. We'll let you know what's involved with that. And we'll also let you know what your financial obligation would be as well. Um, we have several rules for acceptance of care. And that they are basically that you must be committed to changing your life and, and reestablishing your health. You have to take accountability for your health. So you have to make some changes. You have to be willing to invest in your health as well. Um, those are the three things that we, we require because you know, we're going to give you 100% to help you reestablish your health, and you've got to be committed too because that's a partnership. We're not there with you when you go home. <laughs> also, on a scale of 1 to 10, how serious is your illness? How is it affecting your relationships? your home life, your ability to enjoy your life. So on a scale from one to 10, how serious are you about eliminating your health problem? If you are seriously committed, if you're a 10 out of 10, and you really wanna get this problem fixed, I highly recommend that you call our office. We have a very busy office, and we can only accept patients that are really serious about getting their problem corrected and wanna make the necessary changes to do that. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in our office.